I ripped an old set of brick steps out and I put a new set of brick steps in. I'm going to show you how I did it. Well, today I'm going to fix these steps. I told the owner last year I just patched them up, but I come here and do it in the spring. And the railing's loose and the, the bricks are all broken up and used up. And I don't like using brick in northeastern Pennsylvania. It's no good, it don't work. I'm gonna put stone on top of them. So I'm gonna show you how I did it. So what I wanna do is replace the steps with a limestone thread because I don't want them seams going through here anymore. Cracking. This up here, I'm gonna put a piece of concrete. Now step spike code is eight inches. I got seven and a half, seven and a half, and eight and a half. Now the first thing I'm doing I'm getting a piece of cardboard and I'm going to trace a pattern here. Because I want these steps to come out just about the way they were before. And then I'm, I know I'm using 12 inch stone and this is 4 feet, 49 inches. So I got to get 4 feet stones. Now let's look what's going on. I went down there and I made a pattern. And I know I'm going to be using 12 inch stone for this stone right here and I'm allowing a joint so I know that, that stone is going to go there and I go over here same thing I lay my stone out I allow for a joint that's where my stone's going to go so I know this is where my stone goes. Just to make double sure, I check it again. That's the back of my stone. I check it again. That's the back of my stone. I want to leave a little joint for my stone. A little joint for my stone. Now up here, things are going to be a little different because I'm not going to have a stone there. I'm going to put four and a half inches of concrete. That's going to go down here. So this is going to be my concrete. I'll go four and a half inches down here. That's my concrete. Now I'm going to get the scissors and I'm going to cut this out the way this is going to go. That's going to be my pattern that I'm going to use. Get about rulers. Rulers, you make a lot of mistakes. Patterns, you don't make mistakes. That's what am I, what am I preaching. Nothing wrong with rulers, but you got to be a little wise what you're doing. Now I got my, all my pattern out and ready to go. Now I went and got my brick. And the first thing I did is I put my pattern up. See the pattern? And I laid my brick out. I need seven courses to hit the bottom of that. So I laid them out dry and I can make it if I keep it real thin, which is going to be really hard. So let me show you what I did now. Down in my garage and I laid them all out dry. I know exactly where everything's going to go. And I'm going to build my top and go get my railing. And then I'll just uh, finally adjust them. What I did was I built the form. This is going to be my top part that goes on the steps with the concrete. And I got my little parts here that's going to go into the railing. The railing's going to go into here. So I got everything set, the wire, and I just put some fast drying cement around those parts where the railing's going to go in. And then I'm going to, when it dries, I'm going to fill this all in. Well, this is what I'm using to make the mix with, the fast setting. But I'm also, for my own happiness, throwing in an extra half a shovel of Portland. Because I think it's not strong enough. That's about it. I wet the sides of the forms a little bit so it don't stick. And I'm going to start getting it in here. Put it in like that. And I got it in there. And I'm 
fix this real fast. I'm putting our second badge on. Well, this is about it. It's about 45 minutes later. And I'm giving it my final coat. I think I'm just going to let it sit here. That's it. I'm taking my forms off. Like that. This is the iron railing. What I'm going to do is, I don't want to just put it in like that. So what I'm going to do is kind of chip it and paint it up so it looks decent. I got it painted up pretty decent so when I put it back on it won't look that bad well that's it it's in the garage got everything ready to go and then I'm gonna take it down and put it in I'm gonna start taking it apart which is pretty easy because it's all rotted away Well, we're all down on the solid. This is all solid. So when you're working on a pair of steps, just like a dentist, you take out all the bad stuff, and if it's good, it's good. So the mix is one bucket of red masonry sand. So I'm using a colored cement. You don't put the name of the color on it, but I'm using almost a half a bucket and using a shovel of Portland because mortar will not hold up in my area. Now we're going to add that mortar and Portland, dark mortar and Portland to this mix. Mortar doesn't work in Pennsylvania. I'll explain that at the end of this video. I'm going to mix it up dry first. Make sure we get all that color the same the water here's my pattern right here that's going to tell me where my brick starts I lay them out dry and I continue well, I have my first course in so now I'm going to lay these brick where it's cut out That's for the railing. Straighten these out a little bit. Right there, that's where my brick ends, right there. See it? And I built up my back here. So I'm gonna get my bricks, lay them out dry again. I'm gonna lay them out dry, see how this is all gonna work out. I wanna know where those bricks should start. Should start right about there. Then I have my little piece here gonna tell me how the limestone works right on you see so now I'm putting my second row on just like that just 
like that. So that check this out this way. We're good. Check it out that way. Now I'm working on my top course like this. I'm gonna go right through with that. This, this is one of the four boards that I used. That's where the concrete's gonna go down and that's my joint. You see how I'm figuring this all out? That's how I know where I'm supposed to be. It's following my pattern. See that block there? That block? That the course is in, so now we're gonna fill this in with block. Or anything we got, and I wanna make sure as I'm filling it, I get down here below the bank, up against the, the bank so that don't cave in. Just like that, see that? Now I'm just filling in my top step, just like that, cement. That's it. Let's get it right up in there. That. that holds that concrete up. I don't want that concrete sinking. Now I got all my, all the steps are filled in. And now I'm going to go get the stone. We got this on. That's where we wanted to be. So that's working out good. So now I'm marking where my hole's gonna be for the railing. This side and that side, and I'm gonna go up and cut it. I gotta cut the hole in the stone, which I marked it when I was down there. I just got myself a regular blade. I don't have to buy a big blade. You just like a carver. You just That's it, that's my hole for the railing. Okay, we're gonna pick it up and put it in. Right like that. Okay, let's look at this, see where we're at. This way with it. Pull it down a little bit. Before we even lay the stones, I make sure that everything fits. Pick the back end up. Yep, see how it fits? Now I can lay the stones. This was, I left this opening for the railings. Now I could fill it in. Put the stone on. This is my nephew. He's, how old are you now? I'm 18. And what grade did you just graduate? I just graduated the seventh grade. The seventh grade. So he's doing really good in school. Next year he's got a, Good looking teacher, and you know what to tell that teacher if she asks about me, don't you? Yeah, my Uncle Michael's got a lot of money. That's the truth. Keep checking to make sure you're right. Seven and three quarters, seven and three quarters, seven and three quarters. And then sometimes you get a little piece of wood that'll cover the brick up a little bit while you're getting the cement down there. Won't leave a mess on the brick. See, you move it and you don't have a mess then. When you get your sponge a little bit of water, you clean your stone off. Careful not to get the brick dirty. Now, I'm going to fill in a mortar joint. I'm going to use this cement doll, it's called. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to add some water. A lot of water in this case. Really soupy. I don't have a lot of time to work with it. 
It dries fast. So we're gonna make this soupy. Almost like a milkshake. I'm gonna pour this down in there. See that? That's the only way we're gonna get it down there. And I put a little edge marker going right through because it's got a crack because it's on two different foundations. That's gonna hide that crack. Now that's it. I just go over it. If it has a little crack in it or something, it'll go right there. I'm gonna put the railing in. So I'm gonna get a little bit of that cement doll, place it right in there, a little bit in here, like that, and we're gonna put the railing in. Right to that part here. I'll just get my Plunge in my water. Sit. I'm gonna talk about that job a little bit. When you buy those limestone threads, they come in two inches or two and a quarter inches. They're supposed to match a brick. And they're, when you say four feet, is 48 inches but they always add an extra inch on in case you wanted to chip the sides now that brick this was the old brick and this is the new brick and I told them you're never gonna match them brick I said after five six years they stopped making brick that style and you'll never get that style again so he went down and he got the brick I went and picked them up and I put it in but that's one thing I don't like to do is pick out brick for people I say Go right down to the brickyard, you pick the brick out, and I'll pick it up. And that's how I do that. When I do a job like that, I rip it down to where it's good, just like a dentist. You don't go in there and rip everything out. You know, it's crazy to rip everything out. You just rip down what you got to do, and then you rebuild it, just like a dentist. You don't rip the whole tooth out. If he has a cavity, he fixes the cavity. The same thing. Mortar in Pennsylvania basically doesn't last. And especially with brick like that where the water can get down in those joints in the winter it freezes in there busts it apart it gets down in the rest of the brick and busts that all apart so when you put those stones on it acts like a shingle the water hits it it comes off it goes to the next stone it hits it it comes off that's why I like to put stone on top instead of brick other parts of the country you go to Philadelphia it's a 10 degree difference from where I Lip. It's uh, 40 down there and it's 30 up here. It's a big difference in weather. You've seen me kind of pre make that. There's a couple reasons for that. Especially with railings, you want to make everything fit. I wanted to put everything together and then just take it down and put it up. If I brought all the junk there and set it all up there, I'd make a big mess in the yard. Everybody would know I'm doing a job and they'd want to stop and talk to me and uh, give me more jobs, which I don't want. So I like to, if I can, I pre-make it and bring it to the job. When I was a kid, we would go up to the quarries and order a set of steps, and they would make the steps, put it on a truck, bring it to the job, and put it up. That's the way the old timers did it. Now they make everything where it's like pre-made, where you go and you put it together, like those new kind of stone walls. But that's the way it was done in the old days. So I hope you enjoy these videos. Sometimes I have an affiliate site. It'll be in the description box. Thanks for watching. I'm Mike Haddock. Until next video.